welcome back to part 2 of lecture 2 as you can see here there is a 8051 microcontroller and in which we are connecting here a vcc and ground as i mentioned in my earlier video and this is pin number 9 and we also learned in the pinout detail in our previous video if you look at here this is our pinout detail of a microcontroller there is total 40 pins are there now how we can see in terms of hardware connections like I am going to take a microcontroller which has total 40 pins and I am going to connect pin number 20 to ground and pin number 40 I have to connect VCC ok this I am just explaining about typical 8051 and if you look for the commercial version it could be from Intel or even from Atmel so is a, a manufacturer called Atmel and if you look at the part number we get something like this 8089C51 is for CMOS so it's it's actually 8051 family okay and we should have a capacitor followed by a resistor which goes to ground it's a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and it can be 10k or even 8.2k as per the specification from the manufacturer and this is supposed to be 5 volt ok and this point has to be connected to pin number 9 which is called as a reset pin and apart from that as I mentioned we have to connect pin number 31 31 to also VCC ok this is the why we have to connect because I mentioned we are planning to use internal code memory ok so if you want to use internal code memory we have to connect this pin to the VCC if you do not connect the CPU will fetch the data from the external memory ok from the external memory whereas in initial stages we are going to use the internal memory so we have to connect this pin also to VCC so what is the minimum pin requirement for uh, you know to just start with the simple application first is VCC second is ground let us say third is about this and the fourth one is VCC let us assume like you want to connect a simple LED like pin number 1 okay this is a pin number 1 and if you want to connect to a LED what we will do generally we will have a LED connected to a resistor I say here now 5 volt okay and this is my LED and the resistance let us assume like 100 ohms I am not doing any calculations though this is not a recommended design for 8051 but just this can be a simplest circuit diagram which you can implement using a real hardware ok so this can be let us say like number 5 now when you do this arrangement we need to develop the source code which we will discuss in our upcoming videos whereas the internal memory how this is going to be uh, utilized or what are the uh, you know portions of internal memory we already discussed we have EEPROM and also we have RAM ok so both we have now how this memory is going to be utilized ok so I will just show you now there is a register map 
if you look at the internal memory ram it starts with uh, zero as i told and it goes up to ff ff okay whereas in that zero to seven you can see is called registers you can see the register names like r0 r1 r2 is up to r7 that means total we have eight registers it's named as a bank zero okay same way we have four sets that means bank zero bank one bank two bank three so that itself 32 registers are there this is for general purpose registers okay we need to know more about this again as i said if you are going to program with uh, assembly language if you are planning to use a c language we no need to know about these registers in detail okay but you should have idea like what's all about so we can't use any internal ram locations from 0 to uh, of course uh, 18 plus uh, like one uh, yeah 18 plus okay is in hexadecimal it's not 18 sorry it's 18 so 0 to 7 and 8 to 10 or f and again 10 to 18 and 18 to 1f the next it comes 20 so 20 to 2f we already learnt it is used for bit addressable locations that means each location again is having a 8 bits is a is actually a one byte this one byte is equals to 8 bits so each bit can be used for a, a specific purpose okay after we have done with that we have user ram okay so there is about 80 bytes of ram only we can use it comfortably for our general purpose programming okay and of course which includes the stack area also uh, we have to plan for the stack and then from 802 ff we have the special function registers you can see here one more uh, map uh, which looks uh, more informative so you can see here the register banks bank 0 bank 1 bank 2 bank 3 and then bit addressable locations 20 to 2f and each one each bit again has an individual address okay and total will be around about 128 and odd and then we have here general purpose ram which including the stack if you go for 8051 8051 and this is a limitation of you know using a stack whereas if you go for 8052 the additional 128 bytes can be even used for the stack purpose also because as i mentioned earlier the remaining 128 bytes in 8052 can be used using indirect addressing so addressing mode whereas the stack is a kind of indirect addressing mode okay and another 128 bytes that means from 802 ff we have special function register this is same for 8051 as well as 8052 it's not a big difference okay it's same and you can see there are various registers are there these all we are going to learn in our next video sessions okay this is about the reset and I also shown you the circuit diagram that is a very minimum diagram which you need to use it in order to use the microcontroller now once you make a reset okay the system will start fetching the instruction from the zeroth location and also each register will have some default values okay so this is called a default value I believe you can have a uh, a screenshot of this or even you can also google and find out a uh, similar diagram you should remember this if you start programming using assembly language even to some extent even if you are programming with c language also you must know this initial value uh, values okay and the program counter value or program counter register is having a reset value zero that means the first instruction will be fetched from the location zero 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 h okay that's a uh, program memory locations initial address okay and you can see the port 0 to port 3 is as the initial value as 
one 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 like all bits are one and the stack pointer is using the initial value as a 0 7 that means it is pointing to bank 1 okay once you push it increments then pushes the value that means it is pointing out the bank 1 generally we don't uh, need of this many registers so they are taking advantage of this in case if you want to relocate the stack area to some other location you have to specify again by using a instruction okay and all other registers which will be discussing it in future and I just skipped one slide in uh, earlier as one is about the speed and power most of the CMOS ICs as a quality like whenever you put them in a higher frequency of operation it will consume higher power of course the higher there also it reflects only very minimum but when you design embedded system based on the battery uh, power you need to take care of the operating speed also you need to choose a optimum speed in which the controller will give you the results for your uh, you know for your application in a better way and also which, which also save the power in case if you look for some uh, you know controllers the modern controllers which has even the power down mode also of course to some extent our 8051 also can be put in a uh, power down mode but not into the one of the modern uh, controllers okay so wherever possible we need to have or we need to clock into the low frequency and you may need a, you may need to read about the theory about the CMOS devices. The CMOS has a quality whenever you operate them into the higher frequency, it will take higher power. Okay. So in this uh, lecture two, you learned about the various memory organizations like code memory and data memory, and also you learned about the program memory starting locations and the vector locations. And you learned about the special function register and how it is mapped. And also you learned about the simple reset circuit and what is the reset values after this, you know, the reset function happened. And if you have any questions, you can leave it in the review area. Thanks for watching.